operate in truth, right? Operate in truth. You know, tell the truth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gator Truth Florida Football Podcast. I'm Daniel, and on this episode, we're going to take a look forward at the 2024 Orange and Blue game. For those of you watching on YouTube, yes, that is a new intro video put together for this season, kind of adding some things up, trying to make things a little bit better as the viewer. And part of that is because I have joined a group called the College Huddle, just launched this past Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, where it's a group of over 70 fan podcasts for FBF teams, FBS teams across the nation. And as part of the College Huddle, I am also doing a segment on their YouTube page, if you want to look it up, called Why We Huddle. This past week, we did release an interview I did with one of the podcasts from the Washington Huskies. With that said, let's go ahead and get into looking at the spring game for Billy Napier's Gators going into 2024. Let's go ahead and just start off with things to watch on offense for the spring game. Now, the spring game has split the teams up. They were just announced today. This is being recorded on Thursday, the 11th. And the off- first team offense will be on the blue team, where the second team offense will be on the orange team, where the orange team will have the first team defense, and the blue team has the second team defense i kind of like that that we will see our first team versus against our first team and our second team against our second team because it's in a way a gauge to get where everybody's at and also by playing our best on best that should help just increase the development of a lot of these young players and also test some of the newer guys whether they be transfers true freshmen however it is actually running the system in front of a crowd. They have had two two scrimmages this spring already, but it's one thing to scrimmage behind closed doors. It's another to do it in front of a crowd who's looking at you, looking for reasons to be hopeful in all of that about the season. So the first thing that I'd say that we want to look at is the impact of Russ Callaway. Russ Callaway is our tight end coach, and in the offseason was promoted as a co-offensive coordinator. And in an interview, Graham Mertz was asked about the um, impact of Russ Calloway and how Russ Calloway was a bit of an air raid guy. For those that have been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that one of my biggest critiques of Billy Napier's offense is just the style of passing, which definitely cannot be described as air raid meanwhile he's bringing up callaway into this position and mertz's response when asked about callaway said a lot of he's an air raid guy and he lives and breathes air raid at least talking about russ callaway not necessarily about mertz but also hayden hansen in an interview talked about how creative russ callaway is and i have tweeted i have a lot more hope going into the season, going into the spring, knowing that we're hearing about this extra creativity and that Russ Callaway is not just getting a new title, but is bringing an impact. Russ Callaway was formerly at Western Carolina as an offensive coordinator, where he had the number, or Samford, my bad, where he had the number one offense. I'm thinking Western Carolina because former Gator quarterback, um, is a court is the coach there and also has a number one passing attack. So I Kerwin Bell. So I do apologize for that mix up. But anyways, had a top passing attack and now he's bringing that style he did so well with in the FCS to the Gators offense or at least some concepts from it. And I think that will complement a lot of the good running style that Billy Napier brings to the offense and. Again, if you listen to the show for a while, you know I like to bring up how a good passing offense will back off the defense. 
when they actually have to respect it. Where a lot of times last year, we're throwing these very short screens, throwing passes behind the line. I think it was something like 70% of our completions, maybe 80% were under nine yards, and defenses creep up. Meanwhile, if we're hitting, you know, guys in space, even if it's five, six yards down the field, but they're in space and gone after run, that'll back a defensive a defense off, open up room for running backs, and it'll be great. So yes, the impact of Russ Callaway is the number one thing I'm looking for. And one last note on that, last year before the spring game, I talked about three particular plays we love to run in the passing game that I didn't really care to see, which is the two-man route with a guy standing on the sideline as a third guy out for a pass. Of course, that was run in the first series. I talked about the all hitches. That was run in the first series. And I talked about when we have a third down, everyone pretty much running all go rounds. And guess what was the third down on the first series of the spring game last year? There you go. So it will be nice to see if we don't see something predictable or play calls that we see a lot starting off at the beginning of the game and seeing this evolution of the offense under Callaway and in Graham Mertz's second year as quarterback for the Gators. The second thing I want to see is offensive line play. We have brought in transfers for our tackle position, one of our weakest positions. We brought in several guys. Hopefully they work out. We moved Damian George from tackle into guard, where a lot of people believe he will do better at that position. At center, we returned Jake Slaughter, who a lot of times last year was our highest ranked offensive lineman. And then, of course, the other guard position, that's where young guys will need to step up. Guys that have been recruited in the system for two, three years now. That's what I'm looking to see. Can the offensive line do well, especially that first team offensive line against the set, set or not second team, first team defensive line? And can the second offensive team offensive line do good, do well against the second team defensive line? And the reason why I bring that up is we expect our defensive line to be a lot better this year, especially last year, all the true freshmen that got experience. Plus guys that came over like Caleb Banks from Louisville, Cam Jackson from Memphis, guys that had experience stepping up, getting a full year in their system. Now they're taking on basically a reformed offensive line. How does our line do with that? I think that'll give us a good preview for what this offense and or defense may or may not be based on that offensive line play. The third thing I'm looking forward to is what wide receivers will we have stepping up? What I mean by that is we know for sure that Trey Wilson will be an important part of this offense. He would got a lot of touches towards the end of the year last year and mix out through the year. Definitely a dynamic playmaker, but he cannot be the only one. We have Kamira DK who came from Wisconsin, played with Graham Mertz at Wisconsin, who a lot of people have reported has done well. Whether he continues to do well or not will be worth watching. But also, will we see guys like Marcus Burke, who has had a lot of hype on and off for several years? Is this the year that he puts it together and becomes a solid piece of the rotation? Do we see more out of Khalil Jackson or the speedster Aiden Mizell or true freshman Tank Abrams, lots of receivers who can come in and hopefully make an impact. And there's definitely been an upgrade in speed at that position. Mizell, Abrams, both ridiculously fast guys, along with Trey Wilson. And then Andy Jean, who played quite a bit and began the year last year, kind of not so much after an injury and has missed most of spring with injury. That's another guy to watch maybe or maybe not during the spring game, but definitely as we go forward. Another position battle that will be interesting is who will be the second running back behind Montrell Johnson. Montrell Johnson, of course, has been solid for the Gators for the past two seasons. He's also been backed up by Trevor Etienne those past two seasons. The question is, with Etienne transferring to Georgia, who 
steps in that number two spot is a tray on web who was here last year got a few carries and did okay of course he was a true freshman i expect him to be better this year but we also we won't see in the spring game but we also have cam carroll who will be back for the fall and look great in the spring game last year will we see that will we see canon daniels a true freshman coming in or Jordan Ball, another true freshman coming in. Will they take more reps? Will we see potentially two, three running backs sharing sharing carries? Or will we just see Montrell Johnson and just a mixture on and off of whoever's got the hot hand in the second string that day? Or will we see a number two running back step up? So that's something worth watching to see who may get the hot hand in the spring game. And finally, Florida's crown jewel of the recruiting class, DJ Lagway, will be the starter for the Orange team. Of course, that's the number two offense, the top quarterback recruit in the class of 2024. Billy Napier got him here, got him on campus. It'll be nice to see what he can do. Granted, I don't expect him to come out and do everything perfectly in his first spring game. He's only been on campus just three and a half months, so I don't expect it to be perfect. But it'll at least be a good thing to see, see where he's at, and see the potential. And I'm hoping part of that potential is we see an explosive passing game from him and from Graham Mertz, and we also see a little bit of the running capability that DJ Lagway has that Mertz does not have as part of his arsenal. Lagway, um, and the reason I talk about explosive and Lagway and then also Mertz is that has been a focus, and it's been said by Billy Napier, Graham Mertz, explosive offense has been a focus in this offseason. And I want to see with the twos, especially DJ Lagway, as we talk about not just this season, but the future. Let's see that explosion. Let's see, you know, us take advantage. Last year, 10 7 spring game. That's not really what anyone wants to see. And I know there are people at the time saying, look, that's showing our defense is dominant. And I said, no, that's showing not great offense. What I want to see is an offense that even if it gets stopped, I can say, okay, that was great defensive play or to stop the offense and not necessarily, okay, I'm watching the same three predictable pass plays happen and that's what's causing the issue. And I don't think that's what we're going to see now. But, you know, with that said, let's transfer the defense things to look out for. Again, hoping we see that explosive offense because of the impact of Callaway, better O-line play. The wide receivers are stepping up and the emergence of a running back to who would be playing with DJ Lagway on that second team. On the defense, I would say tackling is the number one thing. I've been doing this for a few years. There are other people that have been doing it for longer. We've all watched the Gators, you know, for the last three, four, five seasons, not being a great tackling team. And it has cost us plenty of games. I mean, people want to talk about last year, KJ Jefferson, if we get the sack on fourth down, that game is over. And that's true. We get that win with that. I also think of Florida State on Black Friday in 2022. One of the two times, if not both, we take down Jordan Travis in the backfield rather than let him escape. We win that game. again. That was tackling. That wasn't a matter of pressure. That wasn't a matter of guys blowing, you know, coverage assignments. That was a matter of we just did not get the guy down. So with that said, I do think tackling will be something to look out for. And it'll be interesting when you see guys on the offense like Jordan Baugh, who's considered to be like this wrecking ball type running back, and Trayon Webb, who's, a, again, like a power type back. It'll be interesting to see. You know, if they break tackles, is it a tackling issue? Is it a power issue? So definitely something to keep an eye on, but also, you know, when we've got our defensive backs, are they making tackles on the receivers or are they missing them? That's something to look forward to. And then, of course, we won't see the sack issue necessarily 
because in the spring game, and I bring this up because I brought up Jordan Travis, you know, in the spring game, you just have to touch the quarterback to get them down. And so we won't know how they're going to react for a quarterback. You know, again, Travis, KJ Jefferson, those scenarios, we're not going to know how that works out until we get to the fall, but hopefully we see it in enough other areas that we can at least feel that there has been improvement with the tackling. The next thing I want to really talk about is, or the next thing to watch for on defense is the defensive line pressure. Last year, we did get pressure early and often, and that ended up being something that was indicative that our offensive line was not where it needed to be. I'm very curious if we'll see the same thing this year or whether we'll see great D-line pressure because it's a great D-line. And again, there are things you can tell with that, whether guys are just running straight by people or whether they're like bull rushing, pushing through people past or making a just a phenomenal you know spin move or swim move to get by so those are things to look up, out for when you're looking at the offensive line defensive line matchups is if someone gets beat if a defensive end beats a, an offensive tackle how are they getting beat is it because it's a nice move or talent or is it just a total whiff sometimes a whiff will happen but generally those are things that can at least give us hope of, hey, if the tackle got beat, hey, the end made a great move. Or this defensive tackle bull rushed, pushed into the backfield, got the sack, you know, and hopefully it's a little bit give and take and not just as one way as it looked at times last year. And again, that will also just bolster this will be good for the future. Another thing I want to see is our young linebackers. We have plenty of young linebackers. We brought in one of the best linebacking classes in 2024. We also got transfer from South Carolina, Pup Howard, who was Florida was second in his recruiting after a year away. He's from the area, wanted to come back. I believe he's somewhere in North Florida. I think it's Jacksonville. Anyways, he he's back. He's in Florida along with these young linebackers who can come out and hopefully make a statement and show they can tackle along with seeing guys returning like Shamar James, like Manny Nunnery coming in, making good plays, filling gaps. And that's one thing, again, you can tell they may not make a play, but we can see them filling in the gaps and being where they need to be, where it was, it was not always the case last year. How are they doing in coverage? You know, just, certain things we can tell from the linebackers and how they play. Because again, there are times you're going to see things that look bad and could be they're in the right position and things just mess up or this big play happened because a linebacker didn't fill a gap at times, as we saw sometimes against Kentucky or a defensive back didn't, you know, make the play they needed. But again, you can see, see it in a lot of the spring game at least if we see they're doing the right things in fundamentals those are things can, that can be built up during this uh summer and again in fall camp before the season starts another thing to watch for on defense is the defensive back coverage are we playing tight to the receivers are we you know leaving our positions such as going back to, again, examples. First play against Utah last year, gave up the long touchdown. It is kind of understandable, but the safety did leave his assignment. Uh, Marshall playing outside leverage. The inside leverage was the safety. Now, again, it's excusable. He went up because someone fell down. But because of that, it ended up being a touchdown because the safety wasn't there to make the play on the ball he should have. So do we see... DB stand coverage. Do they play well? Do we see interceptions? Reports out scrimmages. Are there have been a number of interceptions? Are these just, are we throwing, and again, things you can tell whether they're good or not. Are these things thrown into triple coverage or are we seeing a DB make a great break on a ball and step in front and pick it off? There are differences, you know, between a uh, 
interception trouble coverage where it's like, oh, why is our quarterback doing that? And then, hey, this was a really great play by the defensive back. And I hope to see the defensive backs come in, make plays. Of course, last year we had Corey Raymond. He was fired at the end of the season. We brought in Will Harris, who was formerly the Washington DB coach a few years ago, and they had the number one pass defense in the nation. So when you talk about these DBs, I'm very curious to see how they'll end up. I know that there are videos online you can see, if you haven't heard about it, of Will Harris getting involved in tackling drills before they could really run into full pads. Will Harris was there holding holding a tackling pad and letting his guys tackle him onto a pad. Really cool to see, and hopefully we do see improved tackling from the DBs. A guy on the defense, and he's currently slated to be on the blue team second string defense that I want to see is DJ Douglas. The reason I want to see this guy is any report I hear, whether I'm listening to High Top or um, Gators Breakdown, it's always saying how they keep hearing reports from the people that are at practice that DJ Douglas is stepping up and impressing. He hasn't quite taken Castell or Asa Turner, who is a transfer from Washington. Um, he hasn't quite taken their place yet, but he's starting for the second team, which I'd rather see him do that than be a backup on the first team to see the reps and see him develop. And another reason why I'm excited for this guy, DJ Douglas is a transfer from Tulane. Before he's at Tulane, he was a walk on at Alabama, earned enough respect at Alabama that they helped him, you know, transfer to Tulane, or he was able to transfer to Tulane, ended up becoming a star at Tulane. And if you don't know about much outside of Gears football or outside the SEC the last few seasons, Tulane has been one of the best group of five teams. In 2022, they ended up going to a New Year's, New Year's Six Bowl, beat USC, and he was a part of that. And now he is here playing safety at the University of Florida. A guy who started as a walk-on is close to possibly being a starter, scholarship player at the University of Florida. And I like that. I like that this is a guy who obviously has had to work for everything that he's gotten in college football. And I think that's go why we've seen the work ethic and why everyone that's been to practices has said, this guy is impressive. And I think he's going to continue to show that edge, continue to show that ability. And when he does that, it's going to be great for the Gators. Definitely someone I want to keep an eye out for. And now, with that said, we've talked about offense, defense, special teams. I just want to make field goals. I'll, I'll be honest and have the right number of people on the field. We're going to go and kick it off. I do want to give a shout, one last shout out to the College Huddle. Again, check them out on YouTube. Check out the network if there's any team you want to learn about and be like, hey, I'd like to listen to a fan podcast or Ohio State, or I want to check out what's going on with Washington as they transition from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten. All there at College Huddle, there's articles on thecollegehuddle.com. And again, check out uh, my series on the YouTube page, Why We Huddle, interview with Washington and the Sound the Siren podcast. Check that out. Again, Why We Huddle, Washington, it was released already. Check that out again on their YouTube page or on their podcast page. Coming up soon, Florida International University, FIU. Definitely check that out as well. I also want to give a shout out again to my friends at Alvarez Lawn Company. And for those of you that don't know, it is coming up around spring. You probably have all sorts of lawn maintenance that you want to do. Maybe a lawn project. You're like, ah, it's getting too hot. I guess I'm not going to do that. Well, if you want to, give my friends at Alvarez Lawn Company a call if you're in the Central Florida area. 
You can call or text them for a free quote at 407-490-2617. Again, you, if you don't want to mow your grass, if you got lawn projects you want done and you just don't want to do it, or if you want to help out a good family-owned business, please give my friends a call at 407-490-2617, Alvarez Lawn Company, building plans that work for you. One last thing I want to say before we get out of here is please, 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 please check out Florida Victorious. If you're going to the spring game, this is especially pertinent to you because Florida Victorious is hosting an autograph session after the Orange and Blue game where you get to go on the field at the Swamp and get autographs with your favorite players, coaches, all sponsored by Florida Victorious. And I can tell you, if you have never been on the field in the Swamp, you don't realize how massive that stadium truly is until you stand on that field and you're looking up at the north end zone. You're looking up at the west stands. There's just something crazy about being down there. Join Florida Victorious today to get access to that autograph session and to be able to go on the field and, again, meet your favorite players and coaches. With that said, everybody, thank you all for listening. And as always,